Okay, so how's everybody doing? So I just want to talk about the Silver Creek diorama at this stage right now. So I'm, as you can see, I've, I've, uh, I've mounted this cedar tree, the first tree. So I've built up about six or seven feature trees, meaning like main actors. On this diorama. Uh, and this is all based on where I live, like I go up north from here when I go fishing. And so Silver Creek is, a, is an actual creek where I've fished or go fishing. I haven't been for a while because of the floods that we had and so on. It's like I haven't been up there since. So, But that's part of the passion and inspiration behind this piece. Like there's parts up in that area where the trees will blow you away like the size of them. Like a person on this, like the scale of this is a, is around 1 20th scale or so. So like a person is about this high, right? Somewhere between 1 20th and 1 16th. And then um, like the animal, the bear that I'm using is, it would be based on a smaller black bear, which is really common up in Silver Creek area. I see them, I've seen them half a dozen times when I've been up there. They're, they're almost every time I go up there, I see a black bear. Sometimes you, 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 like you end up right on top of them almost when you're walking a creek, you know, and you come around a corner and there he is in your favorite fishing hole, right? But um, never had a bad encounter. Well, one way back when I was logging with my brother, we had a, a bad encounter. But out of all the other uh, meetings I've had with bears in BC, never had a problem, right? They, they, if they know you're coming and they're not intimidated by you, then they'll leave when they want. If they're scared, then they're long gone before you get there. They can smell you and hear you long before you can see them. But I'm really inspired with this piece because of the experience that I had up there. It was a good one. And uh, when I came around a corner and I, I just froze, I had my fly rod in hand and everything and froze. And uh, he was coming out of a pool, he was fishing. And uh, I just let him have his way and he, off he went into the bush. And, uh, and then I resumed fishing. And um, so I've always wanted to build a diorama, but it hasn't been until now that I've actually come about to do it and, and uh, try to capture it with this um, box diorama. But I'm going to build this diorama so it can be viewed outside of the box, like equally well, like from all sides. I don't want to cheat it. I want to apply fidelity to every angle on it. Um, you can see the top part of the creek here is very narrow goes in through there and it, like the water's really low. Then there's a pool up here and then it cascades down to this pool and then down to this one and then runs off. There's a shoal here and this is all gonna be, you can be able to see into the pools there. But uh, this has all been sculpted in now with fast mash. It's a type of cell clay, but I like it better. It's not as gummy and it's easier to work with. You can sculpt. Like most of this rock is all fast mash. There are some real stones I added in here just to kind of highlight and, and sort of finish off. But most of this, 90% of 95 is all sculpted from paper mache. So you can tell that I've done that before, right? But I love it because I can control the uh, plate tectonic and the geology of the ground, right, better. I mean, you can build it up with, with stone too and foam, like you can carve with foam. You can do it that way as well. But I really like, well, there's foam in this as well. Like all this bulk here that's under here is all pink foam. And I think there's some over here too. And then, of course, it's a solid, like a really heavy, well-framed uh, super solid base it's not going to move so but anyway feeling really good about it but i have the main feature trees like well pretty much most of the trees built except some of the background ones because there's going to be a buffer of trees to kind of uh diffuse the background because the main lighting is going to be here on the scene there's going to be a spot above coming down that i can dim and change the color tone and i don't want it really bright I just want it to look like the sun's shining down through and the bear's going up here out of the scene. And then, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I'm going to have a fly rod here with a fly box. A little bit larger scale, like you'll be viewing it from this angle. So 
and it'll be forced perspective when it's in the actual box diorama with the frame around it. So you won't be able to see from the sides or back here, like when it's finished. Uh, you'll just come up to it and, and uh, there'll be a little story, like just a very simple story that uh, someone can maybe pick up on, you know, when they first glance and then enough detail to keep the viewer interested, you know, for a minute or two, right? Okay. Okay, so I just want to point this out. Uh, notice the tops of the trees are cut off. So this tree would be well over, it would probably be four feet high, so it wouldn't be practical for a diorama. And it's going into a shadow box, so they're all cut exactly the same height. Like if I was to put a plywood plate on the top of this, it would be perfect. They're, they're all level. So I can stand this upside down on a table, like legs. Like they're all equal in height. And I capped them with, because uh, they're wood, just CA, with um, roughed up styrene. And then just trimmed them with scissors and a knife. I'm going to paint them olive, which will be the same color as the uh, framing on the side. So they're capped off. So it'll be dark olive where you won't really notice. And this is going to slide into a shadow box, right, which is about this high. Except the, the, where the lighting will be in the center, but inside the box. So where there'll be probably maybe an inch of space, airspace, like on top. Okay, so that's my method to my madness or reason for my insanity there. <laughs> Which you won't notice anyway. And even as an open diorama, like when you paint these out, they don't stand out. You don't really notice, like when you move in like down into the scene, like when you're viewing it down here, like you just don't really notice it because you're pulled in. But anyway, just thought I'd share that with you. Okay. What color is it? You know, that's often a question that I'll get. And I just want to point something out, a little tip for you. It's not color, it's plural colors. It's always layers and colors, like washes. Same as textures. Multiple textures, multiple washes. It's like a painting. If you looked at a painting, you, like, you wouldn't say, what color is that, right? You'd be wondering all the colors and how they work together. Like here's just an example. Like this, these are background trees, sticks, you know, in a, like a, a, a layer further back in the diorama. So these were pieces of wire with texture paste on them. And then painted white with flesh. So they're painted white with a wash of flesh. Yeah, that's right, flesh, right? The color that we think is only made for, you know, figurines. So I take umber, which is like I've said before, is your own version of black or brown, or, or in this case, my version, which I vary with earth, right? And I just use water. There's IPA in the paint as well. I like to use them both. I use water. I dip my brush in water to suspend the corrosive qualities of the IPA when I don't want it to cut into the underlying layer as much as I'd like. But that's all comes from experience. And all I do is I lay on this umber wash. So there was white flesh now an umber wash. So there's three layers of paint. So when this dries, it takes on a kind of a, a sort of mauvish, weathered, gray, umbery hue. Okay, I just want to show you how to make these ferns on a piece of 28 gauge craft wire. Okay, so you can build them up so that they, uh, you know, they're bendable. I build them on a little bit of a length so you can twist them together. You don't need a lot. Like you only probably need seven or so for each one. And then just make, uh, make three sizes, half inch, one inch, inch and a quarter, whatever, for 124 scale. 
and you can see like they look pretty good and then you just airbrush them they look really good uh, i've been making them this way for i think the first time i did it like this was probably 25 years ago or so and uh, i just don't see a better way of doing them like if you want to model uh, ferns or even palm tree fronds and that are larger for military dioramas specific theater stuff a lot of the stuff you can make this way and here i'll show you how i do it so i i just lay my tape on a piece of plastic like to me a to me, it goes down, comes up like re like really well. So, and I just measure. So, I just cut there's three quarter inch, right? I just push it on the wire like that, and then I peel up another piece like this, and then I just lay it on. Right? I don't get too particular, right? Like if it's not totally on center, that's okay. And then now that's stuck together. So I basically have a template. And then what I do is, is I just uh, take the the square frond, if I can call it that, and then just trim it like a leaf, like that, like a long, slender leaf. Okay. All right, just so it looks like that. Okay. There's the other one. And the more rough you are, the more you, more robust you handle them the better they turn out because they get all you know frayed and and stuff like that see so you can see that and then what i do is i just take my blade you just eyeball it and you just take it from the center where the wire is like that and then you just put some um horizontal cuts across the front on each side and then you can see I didn't cut through there, but I gotta change this blade up. I just bought a, a hundred pack of 11, number 11 blades. I should start using them. Anyway, this one's still pretty good. And you can see there, see? How's everybody doing? So you can see now that I've made up a bunch of uh, fern fronds and what I did was I put them away for one, worked on something else and then when you come back to it, it doesn't feel as labor intensive. <clears throat> so I got enough here to cover all my ferns. You can see the beauty once again, right? It's a good old beloved Tamiya tape and wire and you can just shape them and you can compose each fern, every leaf. Aren't they beautiful? And then airbrush them to your color of choice. So what I do is I take 9 or 11 like that. Got a whole bunch here. I take them, I mean, you can put them all together at once if you want. I've done that too with those uh, first two. Or just wrap them in threes like this. So here's 11. That should make for a nice uh, bushy fern. And then I like to grab them. Give them a little bit of an initial twist. And then just chase them with another pair of pliers. Like I say, it's fairly light wire, so. You don't want to over twist this wire. Like, you know, don't, don't reef on it too much. But at least so you get it to where you have a nice, generous stem like that. And then cut it off. And now you have yourself you know, a nice little model fern to work with. And then you can shape it to your heart's content. I tried to introduce a few short ones in there too. And you can vary them up, roll them up even if you want. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'll have... Uh, you know, half a dozen or so nice little ferns to go on the diorama. And these are good for almost any scale, like, well, most notably probably, probably 135th and up. Okay, because ferns can get huge. Like, I don't know about you, but here on the West Coast, my goodness, the ferns are massive. You know, they spread out seven feet, some of them eight feet. They're, they're massive. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
okay? So I'm just gonna airbrush these dark green. Pretty simple, really. And then I'll put some shades of lighter green, almost a yellow green at the end as a highlight. But you can see how well the Tamiya tape takes paint and how cool these things look. Even if you dust them and leave a little of the yellow, they look good. But I like to paint everything, so. But you can see, all right, they're really nice ferns when they're when they're painted up like that and you get highlighted. I didn't even bother doing anything with the stem. It's just wire. You won't see it anyway. So. <clears throat> Excuse me. But if you want to uh, put a little bit of matte medium on the wire stem, just flood it in. You can do that too if you want. Okay. Okay, so the ferns are basically sprayed out. There's some flat coat on them. So there's a, the darker green underneath. You can see it was the same up here, but I dusted them down with a lighter thin green. Okay, an almost yellowy kind of green. Okay, so now there's all that detail that I modeled in. So the way to make that pop, I find in this case, is to, you know, to make them look more like this. I don't know if you can notice, you can see the stems because the stems, there's actually wire stems in here. And uh, I find with some oil paint, Naples yellow in this case, and some dry brushing. And because these leaves are on a wire, they're quite robust. But you can just put your finger in behind them and just rub them down and it'll pick off those little fronds and the stem, the stem that's so prominent. I'll show you a photo, like with the how the middle stems quite a bit brighter than the frond. Okay, so um, I just want to indicate some of that, you know, just to make some of those high points pop a little bit, and then on the bottom, which will show more, uh, I can do the same thing. Take a bit of just straight Naples yellow. And just lightly, it's almost too much on there now. You want to make sure that your brush is fairly dry. But there's enough uh, residual oil paint on there to go the distance for each part you're painting. And you'll see that it actually makes the fronds and the stem show nice. Okay? So you can see here, I'll just tilt the camera just a bit. You can see here that the ferns are actually just growing on the shady side of the creek uh, below this big cedar and these other associated trees. Uh, and the canopy would be quite heavy up high. So there'd be shade and the sun comes down this way. The sun goes over this way, like in the warmer months in the summer, mostly. And you get a lot of the sun down uh, here, I'll just uh, tilt this again, just to give you an idea and zoom back a bit. So the idea is that the sun really hits this spot here, mostly. So it's a little bit more drier along the bank here, whereas the sun doesn't get here as much. Ferns are very sensitive that way. They like a, a, a certain amount of shade like diffused sunlight and shade where there's a lot of dampness. So there's a lot of moisture and uh, a lot of detritus and rotting wood and stuff like that, which they love. So they would uh, flourish in this area, whereas they wouldn't so much over here. 
And when this creek floods, it kind of whips through here, go, it does an S turn and it's, uh, you know, builds up a lot of pressure through the chute and, and washes, you know, that's why you got more wash out here because of the way the current snakes through here. And it comes around, you get a bit of dead wood and, and, and uh, driftwood, everything building up here and then washing out against here and down. And then when the creek goes down, you get these little areas, pools, where the fish can hide, etc. okay? So here's the deadfall, and what I did was is I halfway down the tree, uh, I um, glued on some, just with some matte medium, and sprinkled some Woodland Scenics fine weeds turf on there, and then I just touched it up with a airbrush, a little bit of uh, yellow green. Uh, this was a sizal bush uh, tree as well with limbs. Um, and I'm really pleased. Like This is one of the things that I discovered on this build, right? There's always something new that you'll learn or discover when you try things uh, that I'm going to keep because I really like this method, especially for these kind of snags, you know, the ones that grow in thick, you know, really thick forest and they don't, the limbs don't spread much. And um, the, in fact, they don't green up either until the very top of the crown, you know, where the sun is. So... And I like the way this, this gray turned out too. It was uh, probably half a dozen washes on that before I finally uh, liked it. And then I took my airbrush and just with some light sky gray, just gently sort of dusted the ends of these limbs here just to give them a dried out dead look to them. So that'll go in here like this. Because now, once I get this mounted in, remember I talked about making sure that you choreograph as you're building? So the big uh, remaining Douglas fir goes in here, and then there's a little Douglas fir going up here. So I'll just show you that. Oh, yeah, there's this little baby fir I put in there that sprung up. Because I want to have this... Okay, so this is wire two. I can bend it out of the way, see? Uh, I want to have this just to fill the space here because when you view it from this angle like the bears going up this this is sort of a trail game trail down to the creek here and he's going up he's going to go up through there and when it's in the shadow box like there'll probably be a painted backdrop like that in behind so it looks like there's a forest you know it's just go, goes off into infinium in the forest kind of thing so and then this helps you know to kind of add a little bit of a subtle view block, you know, to help the background work better. But that's going to be filled in a little bit as well. So I don't know exactly the full uh, effect that it's going to have, but it th things will change, especially when you put it into a box and then you bring in your artificial lighting. Then you can really set the mood with color tone and stuff like that. Like that's going to be a lot of fun too. All right. But I also want to... Uh, have it so that I can pull it out and it can be viewed outside of the box and has some kind of um, logic to it, you know, in terms of how you get to view it. Because some of these views like down there, like looking down to the the pools looks cool too, right? Like you're hiking down through there or something, you know? And through there, you know, little uh, little openings. This is why, why I say why, you know, the art of the diorama is an incredible form to, to take up as a hobby and learn to, uh, to grow in because the rewards are endless, right? They really are. And if you take your time, well, the reward is <laughs> magnified, right? The more time you spend.
Okay, so you can see now I've just put this Douglas fir in and I'll just point out a couple things. So this one I'm not going to re-sculpt in like, uh, like some of the other ones where I took fast mash and just stuffed in here. I mean, I could back here a bit, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plant static grass in there with uh, Matt Me and just, just, just pinch and, and stab it in. And uh, you won't know anyway. It's going to be at the back. And even if you do view it from the side, you won't be able to tell. But I made sure I put on, you know, a nice liberal amount of matte medium on the dowel that goes into the foam, which also has a skin of fast mash on it. And I'll point out why I do that. Like, notice here, so I've pinned down this deadfall onto the terrain. Now, if this was all foam, I wouldn't be able to pin this like this. I mean, I have to use deep T-pins or something, but I don't know how deep my foam is going to go. But if I have an eighth of an inch of fast mash over top of my terrain, in this case where it's practical for a smaller diorama, um, it wouldn't be for a large one, obviously, but I can push a pin in, like a short shank pin, and it holds tight really nice. Like the actual paper mache fast mash is really good that way. I just push a pin in, and it's really, really solid. And that way, when it's dry, then it has a really good mount. And then I'll I'll uh, check this side out here and and you know maybe glue it to this tree here. And then of course I can adjust all these limbs. Let me come around the back side here again. So I can adjust these limbs. See these wire branches uh, when it's convenient. You know I can compose them as well. See. Okay. And then there's one more small tree I'm going to put in here. So that will complete. Well, I'll put that tree in right now. It's actually uh, this one here. And it'll go in. Here like that. So that, um, let me just turn this around and then I'll back it up a bit so that uh, let me just move the camera a little bit zoom out a bit so you can see that um, if I want to I can pull that tree but I won't know that though until I start because the composing is not over because I got to deal with the backdrop right in the box right like as a uh, open diorama sure it might make sense or maybe it doesn't but see that I don't make those decisions until it's complete, until they get to the very end. And then you'll know if it makes sense or not. Okay?